Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I'd like to thank all of our witnesses for coming here today to testify on very important aspects of um, one of the most pressing issues of our time. Um, Dr. Garvey and Dr. Hoffert, is climate change real? Uh, climate change has been taking place over all geologic history. Climate change from fossil fuels is not only real, but it is happening at much higher rates than we have recorded in the geologic record. Thank you, Mr. So Hufford. there is I'm no sorry, doubt I, about that. Thank you, Mr. Hufford. I apologize. I have to be expeditious with, with how I uh, ask mm -hmm. these questions. Um, Dr. Garvey, would you agree? Yes, I would. Are large corporations' use of fossil fuels one of the primary causes of climate change that we're seeing today? Uh, yes, is the simple answer. Same here. Yes. Mm -hmm. And how long has there been roughly a scientific consensus surrounding those two facts? I would say uh, roughly 20 years, and that consensus is of actively working scientists who publish in peer-reviewed journals. Uh, thank you. And we have documents going back decades showing mm -hmm. specifically that Exxon Mobil or Exxon knew mm -hmm. about climate change. In 1977, Exxon scientist James Black mm -hmm. told Exxon's top executives that, quote, the most likely manner in which mankind is influencing the global climate is through carbon dioxide release from the burning of fossil fuels. This was in 1977. Seven. This was followed by an internal memo in 1979, which stated that, quote, the present trend of fossil fuel consumption will cause dramatic environmental effects before the year 2050. Dr. Garvey, would you say uh, that the folks you worked with at Exxon agreed with the consensus on climate change? Oh, hardly. Dr. Hoffert? I can testify to after 1981 because I was working at Exxon with a, with a group that was doing the calculations and, of course, uh, we did know that. Understood. Uh, Dr. Hoffert, your work with Exxon was focused on the carbon cycle and climate modeling. I have yes. a slide up here. Are you familiar with this graph from 1982? I believe I am, but, oh, I just saw the graph. Yeah, that that is a calculation. I'm not sure who specifically to attribute it to, it, it could have been done by either of the researchers I was working Can with. Can you uh, it, briefly yeah. explain what it shows? Sure. Uh, what it shows is a projection into the future of uh, carbon dioxide levels and uh, climate change associated with those uh, carbon dioxide levels coming from fossil fuels. I don't have time for a detailed explanation, right. but, but that's briefly, it. Briefly, and, and it's a very accurate representation of what today's climate change actually is. So this was a model from 1982 with that, right. startlingly accurate projections into the present That's day. correct. The orange line shows the actual level of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere through this year. Mm -hmm. And the blue line shows the actual average temperature change. So in 1982, Exxon accurately, 1982, seven years before I was even born, Exxon accurately predicted that by this year, 2019, the Earth would hit a carbon dioxide concentration of 415 parts per million and a temperature increase of one degree Celsius. Dr. Hoffert, is that correct? We were excellent scientists. <laughs> yes, you were. Yes, you were. So they knew. Mm -hmm. They knew, and I, I presume they knew what some of the consequences of that one degree Celsius change would be. Some of them, not all. Absolutely. I would like to have an opportunity to discuss that if someone asks me. Uh, Dr. Hoffert, you have mm -hmm. previously said that Exxon's mm -hmm. historic denial was immoral and greatly set back efforts to address climate change. That's correct. Yes? I, it is correct that I said that. I have good reason to say it. And in 1998, API's Global Science uh, Communications Team Action Plan, which involved Exxon, Chevron, Southern mm -hmm. Company, and more, laid out the industry's denial campaign. They knew that they were going to dump un unknown at that time amounts of money, but a large investment in a climate denial and doubt campaign in, in the United States and around the world, correct? Uh, that's and my, that's my, to the best of my knowledge, that's true. They said, but victory, I didn't know of that personally. They said victory would be achieved when, quote, average citizens, quote unquote, understand uncertainties. 
in climate science. Dr. Garvey, would you say these goals accurately represent the mission of Exxon in the past and today? Not in the past, certainly not when I was there. Mm -hmm. Would you say that currently the, the current uh, environment that is fostered around doubt on scientific mm -hmm. consensus could be a result of mm -hmm. lobbying from the fossil fuel industry? I would say so, but I should let my cohort, you should answer that. Sure, Dr. Reskis. Uh, 350 pages on that in my book, Merchants of Doubt. Thank you very much. All right.